Okay, in this video, we're going to be going over chapter 25, reviewing all the translation and other sorts of items that are of interest. And as per usual, we are going to have several items that are going to be embedded that simply by watching this and preparing for the chapter 25 quizzes and learning from the chapter, you'll be rewarded for simply watching the video. So the title of the chapter is First Morning in Rome, and it is the first morning that the boys have obviously been there. Yam dies arat. Now it was day. Remember that comes from Sum Esse Fu Futuris, and it is the imperfect Eramaras Erat. So now it was day. Magnus erat clamor in urbe. There was, same verb that we just saw there, a magnus clamor, a large shout or shouting in the city. Clamor, a third declension word, is being modified by magnus, thus revealing to us that clamor is actually masculine. You remember for an adjective to modify a noun, it has to have the same case, number, and gender. Servi ad forum magno tumultu, a fourth declension word, I can see by that fourth declension ending, Onera feribat. So slaves were carrying from ferro ferre tulilatus, uh, the imperfect that we have there. They were carrying loads. Onera comes from onus oneris, and as you can see, is a third declension noun with us in the nominative, meaning that it's neuter. So of course, it's accusative plural neuter, which onera is is going to have the a. So the slaves were carrying loads to the forum. Magno tumultu by with because of from in on at a large hubbub uproar ruckus tumult is the word in English but it simply means all of those things that I said undique on all sides shouting and noise strepitus and tumultus are both fourth declension words that essentially mean the same thing like hubbub or ruckus if you would like now remember that in this sentence there is no form or no verb and so what is what we have here an ellipsis it's just simply left out and so you could just simply add again that same erat on all sides there was shouting and a hubbub said nihil clamoris but nothing of the shouting, nothing of the hubbub, of the ruckus, reached, did reach, has reached to Marcus. Now, what we have here is obviously <clears throat> the what we call genitive part of a whole. Both clamorous and strepitus represents all of the shouting and all of the hubbub, and the nihil is the part of that whole that we are obviously then taking. And so these, of course, are both genitives part of the whole. The other thing to point out here is that we have per it from the verb wenia wenire weni wentus. Because that e is long, it tells me that that is a perfect ending, e is to it. If it were just simply Per wain it, and it had, of course, a short e, then that would be the present stem, that would be the present vowel and the present ending instead of just being the two parts of the perfect stem, perfect ending, which is what we see. In lecto stertebat, he, which is our subject there, was snoring, sterto stertere, I think it's a new verb in this chapter, in his bed, for he was tired. Sextus quoque in lecto manebat, from our verb maneo manere. Sextus also was remaining, was staying in lecto, in the bed, but he was not able to sleep. Our verb pot erat is the imperfect of the verb posum pose potui. So if I were to write those principal parts, and here they are, let me do it a little bit larger, there it is, posum and Pose, which of course is the first and the second principal part. Oh, let's see if we can write. There it is. And then the third principal part is po tu e. And so if it had been po tu with a perfect stem, there it is, with then erat, then erat would be the ending on the end of that perfect stem. But because it is merely eram eras erat, the imperfect of the verb to be, with your prefix pot, it is the imperfect was not able instead of had not been able. So Sextus was not able, known poterat, to sleep. <clears throat> Now, this is the fourth principal part of your verb, excito excitare, which of course means to wake up. And so, what we have here is a perfect passive participle, which is the fourth principal part. Four perfect passive participles are translated having been verbed. And so, here it says, he, and I know it's he because it's modifying my understood subject of my verb, kogitabat, which is sextus. So he, having been awakened 
by the shouts and by the ruckus, the hubbub, the noise, whatever you would like. These are both ablatives of means or ablatives of cause. They are the cause of having been awakened or they are the means that give them the ability of the being awakened. So having been awakened by the shouts and by the hubbub, now he was thinking, he was cogitating. Kogito kogitare means to think or to cogitate. <clears throat> De omnibus rebus, about all the things, and that's your fifth declension word, which is the ablative object of de. Remember that prepositions in Latin are either going to have an accusative object, or they're going to have an ablative object. And so therefore, here we can see the ablative object of in, meaning in the city instead of into, or in the bed, or here what we of course have, about all the things, which, quas is a relative pronoun, which we will learn about later, which Titus had told yesterday. And so here we have a pluperfect verb, the pluperfect ending from naro narare. The question then asked, quid hodie vide bimus? What, quid means what, quis means who, what will we do today? Cornelius ne, meaning a question being asked, as the ne in clitic is attached to the first word. And here we have our verb ducet, which with an e we have to look to see is it a second conjugation, duceo ducere, or is it a third, which of course is duco ducere. And the answer, of course, is that it is a third. We also have here the word nos, which is either the nominative subject we or the accusative direct object us. If it were we, my verb would have a mus ending, but it does not, and so that means it's the accusative object, us. And so he asks, will, because this is an E with a third conjugation verb, will Cornelius lead us into the form, in plus accusative, into as opposed to in plus an ablative, just in. Ego carte, he goes on to say, I, which of course that is unnecessary, you don't have to have the I there, because your verb has the ending that implies an I, but it is there for emphasis, and so he, of course, the one speaking, which is Sextus, says, I certainly, with an L-Y, long E indicates the adverb, I want to see the forum, and the curia, and the senators, bum 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 bum, a tricolon crest canes, and with too many et's, a polysyndeton. The first word or first item that you're going to be putting in is the curiam. C-U-R-I-A-M. That is the term for the Senate House, and that's where, of course, the father of the family, Cornelius, would be as a meeting of the Senate has been, of course, called. So again, we have a tricolon crescens with forum, curiam, senatores, and we also have a polysyndeton because he's not wanting to see all of them at the same time. Polysyndeton individualizes them, and he wants to see them all individually. Interia Eucleides. And so, uh, meanwhile, Interia, uh oh, sorry about that. Meanwhile, Eucleides, who had gone out. Now, what I have here is, of course, a form of the verb to go, which is eo and ire and ee. And all that I have done to eo ire ee is that I've added a prefix on the front of it, which is ex. So exeo and ex ire and ex ee, meaning that that is my perfect stem. Remember the third principal part, everything except for the long i, which is the ending. And so since I have the perfect stem, then that of course means that the erat is a pl pluperfect ending. We have the exact same thing going on with ready erat, in which it would not be ex eo, but red. Uh -oh. And so these are both pluperfects, meaning it says, Meanwhile, Eucleides, who had gone out at first light to ablative of time when, already had da -da 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 -da, gone back home, or had returned home. Statum cubiculum puerorum petiwit. Perfect stem, perfect ending peto petere petiwi, to look for, to seek. Immediately he sought, he did seek, he looked for the bedroom of the boys, and he said, Eho pueri 
Alas, boys. Now, the pueri are obviously the same exact form as it would be in the nominative plural, because there we have it, nominative plural, the subject of interpretarat, the boys interrupted. But here, because they are talking directly to the boys, it is in the vocative. And remember, most of the time, the vocative is identical to the nominative in its form. Cornandum surexistis, perfect stem. Why have y'all not yet arisen? Why have y'all not yet gotten up? But he then goes on to say, ego, and again, that is for the emphasis. We don't need it because our verb already has that I. I got up, I did arise. Duas oras, two hours ago. And so he's doing the thing that maybe some of your parents do, which is trying to let you know about how early that they have gotten up in the morning, and that's what exactly Euclides is doing to these boys. Quod, that means because in this context, because I was wanting to buy a new book, Novum Librum, Novum from Novus Aum, he says, I climbed d -d 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 down, I did climb down, they skinned the, they skinned the, they skinned the, perfect tense, early in the morning into the Argeletum. Now, a couple of things to note here. One is that the Argeletum is a neighborhood in Rome noted for its shops, including booksellers, where he is, of course, going. And then secondly, this idea that I climbed down into the Argolatum lets you know that Rome, obviously, is on seven hills, and they live on one of the hills, and so therefore you climb down the hill into the city. So I climbed down De Scandi early in the morning into the Argolatum, ad tabernam quandam, to a certain shop. But your word, uh, qui qui quote, we've come to learn, with a D-A-M on the end of it, is going to obviously mean a certain, and it is talking about the Debernam that we have there. To a certain shop where you are able, potes, to see the names. Nomina is your accusative plural direct object. It is a neuter word, and that's why it has the A. Now, lots of mistakes are made by students here in which they try to say many names, but the multorum cannot modify the nomina, and the reason why it cannot modify the nomina is because multorum is not the same case number gender. Instead, no, multorum modifies poetarum. And even though that looks like it's a feminine, it's a first declension masculine word. It is one of the few first declension words that are masculine, poeta. And so that's why it's modified by multorum, which is obviously more clearly masculine as we see it. So to a certain shop where you are able to see the names of many poets in postibus on the doorposts, and so that's where they are advertising as to who they have there. And then he names off a couple of, uh, of course, authors that you should be familiar with. One is Catullus, who wrote the 116 uh, poem Carmina, and then you have Flaccus here. Flaccus is actually the poet that we know of as Quintus Horatius Flaccus, or Horace, the one that, of course, is quoted up above this board. And he is the one that, of course, wrote the odes and the epodes and the Carmen Saculare, and so forth and so on. And so, therefore, he's telling the boys as to what kind of authors, what kind of uh, poets that are, of course, going to be at this book-selling place. Your second item that you need to put in for that easy free 100 is your infinitive that you see right there, Emere. E-M-E-R-E. -E -E. Spell it correctly. M-A. That's your second item. E-M-E-R-E. -E. So, let's keep going on with the next part. At query. But the boys. And here, whereas that was your vocative, talking directly to them, here it's just your regular old nominative subject. But at the boys interrupted, did interrupt, have interrupted, perfect tense, quickly, and that is the other way by which you can make an adverb. Remember that if you have a first and second declension adjective, you will turn it into an adverb by taking off the ending and adding an E, L-Y in English, but if it is a third declension like Keller, a third declension adjective, you will add I-T-E-R to turn it into the adverb for it. So, but the boys quickly, L-Y, interrupted because Euclides, ut bene skiebant, from our verb skio skire, meaning to know. It's where we get the word science, scientia, which is knowledge. As, which is what it means in this context, they knew well, as they were knowing well, always wanted, always was wanting to teach, don't confuse that with to lead, to teach 
something, aliquid, so aliquis is someone, masculine or feminine, aliquid is something. It's just really quis and quid with the ali on the front of it. Something, no we. And that no we is, again, from no wus aum, but it's in the genitive. Because of all the new stuff, we are taking the part of it, which is the something part. And so the boys are going to interrupt him, obviously, because they don't want him to go on some sort of diatribe about either Catullus or Horus or whatever it might have been. So they quickly say, quid in weis widesti. What did you see? What have you seen in weis? In the streets. Now, your fourth, or I should say third, your third item that you're going to put in is nothing more than the ut that you see there in line 12. U-T. It's just a simple two-letter word, and that is your third item. And so, then, there is a response by Eucleides after they ask him, what did you see in the streets? And his response was... Nihil. Now, he says nothing, but in fact what he is implying is weedy nihil. I saw nothing. Because when they say, what did you see? His response would be, I did see. I have seen nothing. Nissi. Except. Now, this word nissi can mean if not, unless, or except. But in this context, I would argue that except is probably the best translation. So, I saw nothing except what I did see, which is why miserum hominum would be in the accusative. It is the direct object of the implied verb, what I did see. I saw nothing except I did see a miserable man. And that man, oppressum. Now, again, that is the fourth principal part of the verb. Oprimo oprimere, oppressi oppressus. The fourth principal part is what we call the perfect passive participle. And it translates having been verbed. Remember, the participles are adjectives. And it tells us what kind of miserable man. A man having been crushed by stones. Lepidibus. Lapis lapidus. Uh, and that's where we get the stone, lapis lazuli. It's a, uh, uh, um, a precious stone that is blue. Lazuli, of course, means blue. And so, therefore, it is a fellow having been crushed by stones. He goes on to say what was going on while he was walking the streets. Boes. Remember, these are bovines. They are either oxen or cows or whatever you would like. And they were pulling, trahebant, lapides quadratos, another perfect passive participle from quadro quadrare. Quadro quadrare means to square, to make square. And so therefore, it's translated as having been squared or squared. And these are the kind of stones that you would use for building. And so he says, oxen were dragging, having been squared stones, stones having been squared, squared stones, in plaustro, in a wagon, not into, but in plus ablative, in, ad novum ad officium, to a new building, and here, because quod is referring to the neuter word ad officium, it is not going to be because, but rather, in this context, this quod in line 15 means a building which Caesar, and remember, this is going to be the emperor known to us as Titus, the son of Vespasian. But in tradition of the very first Caesar, Augustus Caesar, who was named Caesar because of his adopted father, the dictator, not emperor, Julius Caesar, it is going to obviously just be a title. It would be the equivalency of us calling every single president the Washington after the very first. And so a new building which Caesar is finishing. This is your verb, facio facere feci factus. But when you put a prefix on the front of a verb, often cone, it will convert the a vowel to an i. So that is why it is instead of con facet, con ficet. And whereas facet just simply means makes, con ficet means to make completely, as in to finish. And that's what this verb means, conficio conficere. So to a new building, which Caesar is finishing, finishes, prope domum aria, near the golden house. Now, the domus aria is indeed the golden house, which is a structure created by the last of the Julio-Claudians, 
Nero, the first five emperors of Rome, which of course are Augustus, Tiberius, Caligula, Claudius, and Nero. Nero, the last of the Julio-Claudians, is going to be responsible for building this ginormous structure that stretched all the way from the Palatine into other sections of Rome, into the section where future the Flavian Amphitheater or the Colosseum would be built. And as a matter of fact, that is this new building. So it is indeed Villud Artificium. That building, Illud, being one of many words that means that, Ile la Illud, neuter, because it's modifying the neuter Artificium, is, all language verbs are equal signs, a huge amphitheater. Nominative, singular, neuter, nominative, singular, neuter. And an amphitheater, as you know, is going to be a theater and another theater. So there's one theater looking from above, there's another theater, and it's essentially the Colosseum as we know it. That is the kind of structure. A huge amphitheater, and soon the princeps, the emperor, the first citizens, if I see, I long e, future will be, will make games there. Now remember that the word Ludi ludorum in the plural is going to mean games, and that's what that is in the plural. But if it were singular, ludus, ludi, it's the word that implies a school. So it's the same word, but different implications, whether it is plural, games, or whether it is singular, school. And so here we have the third I-O, if I see, I long E, future will be, the emperor will make games there. And so he's going to be in, opening it up. Titus is not the one who built the Colosseum, the Flavian Amphitheater. It was his father Vespasian who had been building it over the course of ten years. But Vespasian unfortunately dies and his son of the same name, Titus Flavius Vespasianus, we call the son Titus to distinguish him, is the one who will open it to see if y'all will have been. And that is a future perfect, we have a future, or I should say we have a perfect stem and a future perfect ending. If y'all will have been good boys at that time, perhaps y'all will go the future of Eire. Ibo, ibis, ibit, ibimis, ibitis, ibunt. Y'all will go, perhaps, ad ludos, to the games. Again, the plural games. Your fourth and final item is actually found in line 15. It is that word new, no womb. N-O-V-U-M. So go ahead and put in that fourth and final item, N-O-V-U-M, and hopefully watching this video is going to help you in preparation for the quiz that we will eventually, plural quizzes, have over this chapter. So thanks so much for paying attention and good luck.